while, boy. Oh, a yeah, good dog you are. Hey, your, your people are out there. Your people, those are your fans. They like you better than they like me, and you never want to see them. <laughs> That's all right, I do. Hi, everybody. It's Robert Earl out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center with Cascade the Wonder Dog. And down here, out of your sight, roaming around is uh, Sarah, the world's ugliest chihuahua. Uh, just ugly, I guess. And we wonder what you do, don't we, pal? Hey, welcome to a vlog for, I think it's January 25th today, Saturday. I'm going to do a vlog because I'm no longer do, I'm not doing the um, live streams, and I don't think I'm going to get back to the live stream because I just, I personally wasn't really happy with the way it went and the content and that, so I think I'd rather stay with trying to do a vlog like every, every week or so. So if you've come by because of a keyword and you, you, you're here listening to this, it's a vlog for people that have been following us and know uh, kind of what we're working on here. So some of what I say, you know, if you haven't followed us, you, it might not make sense. But watch anyway because there's always good information and little gems of knowledge, or maybe not gems, but nuggets of knowledge that I'll throw out there just from the fact that I've been on the planet for seven decades. So, um, and I, what I'm going to do is... I get a couple questions through the week, usually from uh, people that are regular followers. I'll answer those questions at the very end of the, um, of the vlog here. But I'm in the greenhouse right now because two of the projects were in the greenhouse. Now one, one was the, uh, uh, the propane heating system, which is supplemental. The other is the, um, uh, the solar heat on the roof. That's the main heating system and that's been working excellent. I don't even have to show you that because it's just been doing its job. It's actually brought our water temperature up from running in the high 50s, which is deadly to my tilapia, so that now it's running in the mid to high 60s overnight and into the 70s in the daytime, which is getting close to ideal. So that system's working great, as is the propane system. The third system that we were trying to put in here are the, are, is the single air tube that we have. And I'm going to start the vlog with that air tube and, and the project that I discussed in our last vlog, which was the uh, California cooler, because I have some new information on that that kind of changes things. Let's go over there and take a look. So the question that I had and that a lot of you have is, do air tubes work? You get a lot of conflicting information. A lot of people that are building an earthship type um, uh, structure are going ahead and putting them in. Uh, there's been some mold issues. There's been, there's been some real issues and some bad information that's been put out. I kind of was a victim of the bad information I thought in, in uh, a couple of previous videos. Now I finally got, after a, a nightmare of shipping, I finally got the extensions that I needed. My tubes were in the ground, but that was it. They didn't come up, just, they didn't even come above ground. I had to dig a hole down. So I got the ex extensions I needed, which was 30 feet of, um, of tubing with the connector. So what I've done is I've connected my input here with, and I've put my fan on for now. This is all just to see what kind of temperatures I have in case or actually for the California cooler. My output's over here. Uh, this morning I did, the, uh, I did a little video segment on the, um, on the temperature and I'll cut that in right here. Well, I've been running the uh, air tube for about 15 minutes now. Sorry, I can't keep the camera still. Uh, the air temperature is running 55, 56 degrees here in the greenhouse and I've got it coming out at 58.6. So you see it's not a huge difference, uh, but at these temperatures I don't expect such a huge difference. It is just a little bit of an increase though, um, giving me kind of an idea of what's coming out of the ground. Just a quick second look at the air tube. Uh, as you can see the uh, air temperature is 59.9, 60 degrees, and we're at 61.9 blowing out of the tube. Whoops, keep it centered. Uh, it's kind of giving me an idea of what that ambient temperature at 8 feet underground is going to be and it'll be somewhere in the 60s. Now what I have to decide is, is that going to be enough um, on its own for the um, California cooler? And again, we'll discuss that in a second. In a second. Now again, right this minute I have a temperature coming out of here at 65.5. 
This has been on for about three hours now, so I'm believing that um, we're close to what will come out of the ground here at 65.5, but that's kind of disappointing. Uh, in a way, I've got 65 degree air going in and 65.5 coming out, so it's just a little bit of a heat increase. That's fine because it's probably not any, any warmer at eight feet underground than that. What's a little bit disappointing is that I've been running about 14 degrees cooler coming out of these tubes in the daytime when we've had sunlight. We don't have sunlight today, that's why my jacket's on. But I've been running about 14 degrees cooler. So if it's 70 degrees outside, it's 56 coming out. That's fine for a cooler, a California cooler or a root cellar type um, setup. But when it's 94 degrees and I've got 80 degree air coming out, that's not so good. So I'm beginning to think that I won't be able to do an open loop system in the greenhouse. In other words, I won't be able to take air from the, um, from the greenhouse itself, blow it through the California cooler and back out. I don't think we're going to get the air cool enough. So it's important to me now what we get here, 65.5. If that's the actual temperature down at eight feet, what I may have to do is do a closed loop within the California cooler, so that the air comes in the bottom tube at the bottom of the cooler, comes in and blows out the top, which would be up at eight feet, comes out the top right back in, and blows the air right around. By doing that, whatever the temperature is underground, I should be able to get that temperature in the cooler. Another problem I might have, even on a day like today, because um, we have the you know, light coming through here, is the tubes are black and the tubes may be heating the element. It's only down about here, the sensor. So the tubes may, I may be getting some heat in the eight feet there to see, um, you know, that might, they might be giving me a false reading. So I might, I, I'm going to have to address that on the input and on the output by either insulating them or covering them or doing something to get rid of that black because that black, especially in July, is going to absorb heat. So, Bottom line is, the California cooler is still kind of open to what I'm going to do, but I believe I'm going towards the uh, closed loop, and we'll do separate videos on that. But that was one of the things we discussed. Now, I did discuss the, um, I did discuss the propane heater, and let me cut that in right now, and then I'm going to come back and talk about it for a second. So the temperature right now, I just turned the uh, propane off. The temperature right now is, uh, looks like it's 146 degrees in the tank. And all I'm going to do now is just open the valve. You'll see the water coming out down there and it should come out steaming. And we'll just leave, um, leave that water come out. Of course, what's happening is just like what happens in your domestic hot water. This comes in and it pushes way down to the bottom before it actually comes into the tank. Then it pushes the hot stuff on top out. So as soon as I get that down to uh, oh, 80 degrees, I'll shut it off. Uh, but for right now, we're in here with 40 gallons of water going into the pond, raising the temperature. Now that's important because I just started seeing the fish the big ones uh, swimming again so I haven't lost them all now have we stunted them or damaged them that we don't know and won't know but uh, at any rate we're starting at uh, actually it just kicked up to 150 right now so we're starting off at 150 uh, and that should give me enough to raise the temperature maybe a degree or so we've got 65.5 right now so 66 closing in on 70 we'd like to keep 70 as a minimum but uh, with a cloudy day like this, it's tough. Okay, let me apologize in advance for the geese, which as soon as I start talking, they're gonna start doing their squawking. Um, we're not sure if we like the geese because of that, to tell you the truth. They're constantly making noise, which we knew. We've had geese before, it's no surprise, but uh, it gets to be a little bit of an issue when somebody comes to see the place and they're really interested and we stop here to talk about something and they can't hear a word I'm saying because the geese are all talking. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll deal with that. I'll try to sell them if I do get rid of them. I'll try to sell them first and then I'll eat them. Uh, but anyway, that's not what I'm here for. Look what I got. I said in my last vlog I needed 30 cinder blocks. Well, here's 30 cinder blocks. Plus, when I did the uh, goat, the, the, the um, Billy Goat 
house. I had forgotten I had cinder blocks over there holding up the uh, camper cap, so I had another 13 uh, cinder blocks over there. So I've got plenty of cinder blocks now to go around this foundation, which we poured. And Steve, if you're still watching this stuff, um, thank you for helping. And uh, we'll, uh, you know, we're, we're now going to build on the foundation. So I've got that done. That's a big project that we're going to start as soon as I finish a couple of others. Uh, which brings me to something right now that I did want to say. Here I come, just in time. In the past, everybody has been incredibly generous in donating things to us, either stuff or money. That's been wonderful, and I've pretty much tapped all of you guys out. However... The donate button is still on the main channel page, Eco Ranch USA. That's youtube.com slash Eco Ranch USA, all one word. Uh, because we still need a little bit of help, I am completely and utterly out of screws and nails. I have zero screws and nails. And what I want to do is put this, uh, put these cinder blocks down, and then I'm going to deconstruct pallets and actually build my uprights and my rafters which is another video, but uh, so that I can build the rock wall on the outside using that and chicken wire and, um, as, as a way of making the wall stand. But I don't have any screws to screw together uh, any wood. So I could, uh, if anybody's got a couple boxes of screws laying around, anything from two and a half inches to four inches or a box of nails, please send them to me. I could definitely, definitely use them because we've just put so much into the greenhouse that uh, we're tapped out and we're going to be tapped out until probably May. So uh, I'm dependent on whatever I can get. So if you, can, if you can and you feel like giving us a hand to help us finish the house because everything's gone into the greenhouse that is now producing food that for us and food that I can sell at the farmer's market starting in two weeks. But I need fasteners like yesterday, so uh, anybody that's got fasteners, nails, screws, I'll take any head of screw. I prefer a star, um, a star head, but I'll take any kind of head of screw. Just anything to get going, two and a half to four inches or nails. Uh, and let's move on because I got a couple of really good projects I'm working on right now that you're going to like. And one of them is not going, we're not doing a separate video on it. Let's go to that one right now. Well, as much as a number of you folks would surely love to see me in a stockade for oh, 100 or 150 years or so, this isn't a stockade. This is something else we needed. Because if you're going to have dairy goats, you've got to milk those dairy goats. And the problem is, they don't really want to be milked. So you need a station that you can get them up on where they're up at a reasonable height so you can milk them. And also uh, hold them so they can't back up or run away. So this is, and I went on YouTube, so that's why we're not going to do a video on it. There's about 20 or 30 excellent videos about how to make a milking stand, but this is the one I made. Um, I didn't quite get my circle right, but it'll hold their heads in. You just get them to walk up in. I've got to put a feeder right here. They'll come in, they'll eat their snack. You just close that on their head and latch it, which I have to put a latch on it. Uh, and then you can go ahead and milk them. Debbie asked for a, um, Debbie asked for a, a side rail here, just so that they wouldn't be too apt to fall off. And of course, she'll milk from this side and uh, put a little ramp on there. Should work just fine. It looks like every other one, um, maybe a little bit more rustic than some of the others, but uh, that was a project that I did with my last screws and um, uh, just some junk wood I had laying around. This was junk wood that I just sanded down because I had to get all the paint off of it, paint and varnish, in case they nibbled on it. Uh, and then I had an old shelf and, you know, just some old stuff sitting around that we built this with. Took me two days because I worked slow, but uh, we got it done the way we wanted it. Speaking of the goats, this is their nursery that Debbie's got all set up and ready for them with some layers of uh, straw down there. She's got a straw seat for herself to sit on if she has to assist with the births. But let's take a quick look at the girls. Now, I haven't worked with the girls, so they're real shy around me. They used to come right to me, but I just have been so busy. You can see one of our boys over there that we call him Punchinello. Here's the one that's going to explode first. She has milk. I don't want to make her get up and um, run away. Uh, she has milk. All three of them have milk. And according to Debbie, they're due uh, anytime between today and the next 
two weeks. You can see this guy, this girl is um, sagging quite, well yeah, she's sagging quite a bit and pooping of course, they always do that when the camera's on them. And then the third one is the littlest one, but she isn't so little, look at how wide she is there. So they're due almost any time now and uh, uh, we'll do a video on that for those of you that are interested, but I just thought it'd be kind of cool to take a look at them. So behind me out here in this trashy area, which uh, the trolls never hesitate to mention is the trashy area, this is my firewood pile and also the, the whatever kind of reclaimed wood and lumber I have. Got about 40 pallets out here that we're going to deconstruct and use the uh, two by fours um, of the pallets and kind of nail them together like that to make beams for, uh, uh, for the wall of the house. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that even uh, uh, even when we come into the, a little bit of money where we can actually buy the fresh lumber because there's nothing wrong with reusing that wood. That'll also leave me the um, uh, the planks that I can use uh, again in that construction. I've got these fences to uh, deconstruct here. The tires, unfortunately, I have to I have to uh, sequester them somewhere on the property because we're never going to use the tires. And I've got a stack of bottles here as well. Uh, but I have a start on wood. I'm, I'm, I've asked people in the area if they have any uh, used lumber, used dimensional lumber, I'll come and clean it up, which is what I'll always do. But right now I really would like to because without fasteners and without lumber, I can't really get a good start. But I do have the, uh, I do have the cinder blocks, start deconstructing this. So we'll get ahead and it will be a, a truly a three hour situation because all of those, that wall that I have to do on the house is going to be either reused, repurposed, or recycled. You know, it is exciting and rewarding to see a project come together or a dream come true or a design come to fruition. Like the stuff behind me here, this is all part of the finished part of the house. We've got a long way to go, but I did it, and this is, uh, this is the way I tell people to do it. I did it this way for a reason. Although I'm not a doomsday prepper, I am a realist, and I realize that at any point in time, we could have a societal collapse. There could be a whack job somewhere out there that gets a hold of a nuclear weapon and you know hits Washington, D.C., New York, whatever. We could have the supply lines all interrupted. I knew this when Debbie and I started this journey, so what I preach, teach, and what I'll recommend to you and what I've done here myself is we built our infrastructure first. We came here with the travel trailer and we built this one little building that's now veneered in the bottles, but we built this little building, 16 by 32, along with the um, travel trailer so that we had a place to live in and put our stuff in. We had... Now, there were a couple of questions that came up. Um, from you know, regular viewers or people. Uh, I, as I keep saying, if you're a troll and you want to troll me and say, well, why didn't you do this? I would have done this, 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 this. First of all, remember, your suggestion costs money. It doesn't cost you a penny to make the suggestion, but it costs money to implement it. Second of all, I don't know if you're a 300 pound fat guy sitting in his mother's basement eating a ham sandwich being a, a professional troll. So send me a, vi a video link to where to how you did it, and then we'll uh, we'll connect that video so that people can see how you did it. Then your suggestion has validity here on this channel. Otherwise, talk is cheap. So questions. Let's see. One I get got quite a bit of is: Are you going to do um, Are you going to do the live stream? I'm beginning to think, as I said earlier, no, no more live streams. I just don't believe I want to get into that. Um, the big reason is this is not my this is not my hobby. This is not my life. This is my life. If I can document it, that's great. Uh, the live stream just I just didn't feel right with it. So I think we'll leave the live stream off. Next question I've gotten a lot of over the last week was about work exchange or just guests in general. We're no longer able to do work exchange the way we used to do work exchange simply because we moved the travel trailer from being a convenient place with running hot and cold water and air conditioning and heat out to the campground where it now is a community building. However, if somebody wants to come here and visit for a couple weeks or up to about three weeks, if they like, you know, if we all get along, 
and you're you're self-contained you have your own tent your own trailer your own rv or camper definitely you can come set up in the campground or in the space that's behind you that we actually built for um, working guests or work exchange guests stay here for free i will feed you at least one meal a day um, and we can work together for three four five hours a day or as long as you want so definitely still open for that but you do need to be self-contained and self-contained doesn't mean oh i'll sleep in my car or i'll have a little pup tent because i will feel bad for you and then it'll kind of be the inconvenience that we really don't want we want you to be self-contained so that when we're done working together you're able to go out on your own um, in terms of visiting anybody can visit anytime come stay Stay overnight uh, in your own self-contained camper. Come, come for a short visit. And lastly, about three or four of you wrote me, I think about four of you wrote me, um, asking about the guest that showed up last week, called me 40 times while he was on the road. I'm over here now, I've gone 20 more, more miles giving me all those reports. And then after a bit, all that excitement, he got here and I was busy. I was busy. I had to make a couple of trips. Um, I asked him if he would help me unload the truck. Uh, didn't want to help unload the truck, so I'm going to go take a nap. And as soon as Debbie and I turned our backs, he boogied and was gone. No reason, no anything. Well, ask me, have I heard from him? I have not heard from him, but I have heard from him. And what I mean by that is the guy called me about four, at least four times. Debbie didn't tell me how many times. She just didn't. She just picked up the phone and set it down, and I don't go through the call log. I got better things to do than go through the call log. But he did call about at least four times and left messages. Okay, well, I listened to the message and I knew what he was talking about, right? No. I learned a long time ago from the old Doc Savage dime novels. Um, one time Doc Savage was walking through this cave and it was just a gory place. There was blood and dead bodies all over the sides. Everybody was freaked out except Doc Savage. And they asked him, how come you're not freaked out by this? He said, well, I just, if I know something's going to freak me out, I'm just, I just won't look at it. I just don't look at it. So how do you do that? And his answer was willpower. Well, I've applied that in my daily life. I mean, if I see, if I've seen a horrible accident where somebody's splattered all over the place, I don't sit there and look at him and then throw up. I'll, I just won't look at it. The same thing when you've got somebody that, that um, has developed a case of telephone testicles. They won't say anything face to face, but they get their telephone testicles and they're going to call, you son of a bitch, uh, or something like that. I don't need to hear that. All it's going to do is make me mad. I don't need to hear it. So I, I deleted his messages. Don't know what he said. Don't know what the deal was. Don't know why he left to this day, except I did hear that he was down about two and a half miles to my south southeast to this to the other guy, the publicity hound that uh, never met a, a, a newspaper. He didn't want to offer money to come and do a story on him. Uh, both of these guys, you know, they're 59, 60 years old, never been married. Um, that kind of a person. And he had been in touch with him. He had visited him. I'm assuming that, I mean, the guy was on vacation. I'm assuming that they struck up some kind of a romance. So it's a little um, vacation romance going on over there. And uh, maybe not a case of telephone testicles, but I'll never know. Telephone testicles and keyboard cojones. I just delete, delete, delete. But anyway, that's what uh, happened to him. So I still don't know what, what happened. And I'll never know unless he comes right here face to face and tells me. So anyway, that's that. Uh, I guess that's uh, the vlog for this uh, this week, week, 10 days, whatever. Uh, get you an idea of what we've got going on. Um, again, fasteners, I'm in desperate need of fasteners. <laughs> Trust me, I need fasteners so bad I can taste it. Uh, I'm literally at a dead stop. I can deconstruct the pallets, but that's about all I can do. And please, you're going to be doing, we're going to be doing a video um, on the wall on a couple other things as well as a vlog in about 10 days. But until we do that vlog, Cascade the Wonder Dog, Sarah the World's Ugliest Chihuahua, and wherever she is, and the rest of us out here as well as myself, say from out here at the Eco Ranch Sustainable Living Educational Center in far west Texas, we'll see you later. Right? <laughs>